The discounted cash flow valuation method is one of the most important concepts that links operating business, entrepreneurship, new product development, capital budgeting, any of the forward-looking business activities that we face to the financial aspect of how much that activity you're pursuing in the present sense is worth into the future, which tells you how much money <clears throat> you might be willing to invest in the activity because you understand how much it might be worth going forward far into the future. And discounted cash flow is the innovation that helps us understand how you compare investment in the present with benefit that flows into the future. The way that one goes about this in terms of thinking about an entrepreneurial enterprise and the business is to understand how that business is likely to unfold in terms of the amount of benefit or capital or cash, cash flow, the business th will throw off each month, each quarter, each year, this year, next year, the following year, five years out, 10 years out, 20 years out, 50 years out, 100 years out. How likely it is the business will continue to throw off cash flow and how much cash flow that is. So the first thing that you have to do is figure out what the likely cash flows are close in, in the near term, this month, this quarter, this year. What will that cash flow be? And then what will it be next year? What will it be the following year? As far as you can actually plan, which is usually three years, four years, five years, depending upon how much you know about your business, which you don't know much if you're a startup, but if you are a business like an oil company, you know how much an oil well is going to be throwing off oil and what the likely prices are going to be going 10, 15, 20 years into the future. You can forecast that so you can model way out there 20, 30 years. For a startup, however, much is uncertain. There's very little that you actually understand and know at the present time. So therefore, you have to limit the actual calculations to three, four, five years, maybe six years, something like that, where you can realistically forecast what might be happening in an enterprise that you're beginning to start. The way you do that, of course, is you figure out what your revenue is likely to be, what your gross profit's likely to be, which is revenue less cost of goods sold. Then you figure out from your expenses what your operating profit is likely to be. If you're making a profit, you have to pay taxes, so you have to take that out because that does not go to investors. If you have to pay bankers and others' interest, you take that out because, obviously, that also is not going to go to investors. That leaves you with net income. Then you have to make adjustments for things like you have to put working capital into the business. You have to buy inventory, make sure your inventory remains stocked. If your business is growing, you need more inventory before you actually sell it. So you're actually putting more cash into the business to put inventory in place. If you have, if you have uh, good credit policies with your customers, then you may be loaning them money. That is, with accounts receivable, you send them invoices and they pay, and that may be 30 days, 60 days further out. So you have to continue to invest in the business before you get the cash in. So you have to make those kind of timing adjustments. You also may need to be continually adding um, property plan equipment or hard assets in your business if you are growing and you open a second restaurant or you expand your manufacturing capacity, you may be, need to be investing dollars and cents into the business to sustain growth. That is not crazy investments, but just the investments that are needed to replace your old equipment as it wears out and then also to support growth. You need to be putting those in there. And then after all of that is, in, <clears throat> is it taking into account, you have what's called free cash flow. Free cash flow is the amount of cash that comes out of your business for investors as, a, as, a, uh, as an outcome of your operations. Okay, so you're running your business and you get $50 a day out of it positive and $50 every day adds up and then $100 as you grow and that is your free cash flow. So you want to figure out based upon your business model and your financial statements what that is the first year, what that is the second year, what that is the third year. And of course, right at the beginning, you have to make investments. You have to buy some equipment. You have to lease a, a location. So at the beginning, there's a startup investment, which is the very beginning of the year. 
The other investments in the first year you tend to think of as coming December the 31st or the last day of that year. But that startup happens time zero, day zero. So you have to take that into account. All right. This is the, uh, the analytical part and the part that works with operations as far out as you can plan. One year, two years, three years, four years, whatever. But then you have to say, okay, what happens after that? The business doesn't just close its doors and shut down. It continues to operate generally. It continues to go. It continues to move forward. So what, what is, how do we calculate that? And that's known as your terminal value, which has a perpetual growth rate. The discounted cash flow uh, financial model, we'll modify that a little bit later, but the financial model says you have to figure out once you've modeled to a point where you're just growing at a steady state, maybe 3 or 4% every year as people, as the marketplace grows, as more people are born and you, get, you have your population increasing, you'll grow with the population of 3% or so. That becomes a perpetual growth rate. You figure that out. And so after you've done your five years, which in theory is supposed to model how much you, you the, the, the for early years of your business where you're getting settled, and from that point on, you'll grow at a steady state rate going forward. That's the perpetual growth rate, you know, four year, four percent, five percent, maybe ten percent if if your marketplace is growing at that rate for you know 10, 15 years into the future. So you use a perpetual growth rate, and we'll talk more about this in a minute. Uh, we're actually in the next video. And then the last piece is how much are how much risk is there in this plan? That is your discount rate. Discount rate, which you'll recall from finance, is the percent of that you expect to get from money by tying it up in this investment because you're taking certain risk. What that means is if you have $100,000, you could go and put it in the stock market and with, you know, at, with inflation included in roughly in over the last 100 years or so average, and this is very rough, something like 10% returns. So why would I invest in a startup like yours if I can take that money and invest in the stock market and get over time with less risk, 10% returns? So my investment in your business has to have at least 10% returns. And then you start varying it and saying, okay, I can invest in companies that have been around a long time but still aren't public. They have less risk than you do because you're just getting started. And maybe when I invest in those companies, you, I expect 15%. So that means that I need to get, and so that's what I'm giving up by investing in you. So I have to get at least 15% because you're riskier. And you have that continual process saying, how much do, does it take to invest in a startup company? And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we talk, talk about the specific formulas in the very next video. So you had to decide on what that discount rate is and how you apply that in the equations. In the next video, I'll talk about the specific equation and how that works and how to formulate it and how to use it. But just to summarize, what you're really doing here is translating your business operation into how much money is left that is thrown off, the return that comes from your business in the, terms of in, in the form of a cash flow every period for as long as you can plan and then off into the future. And then the next thing you have to do is figure out how much risk is in your business so you could figure you could determine what someone is going to expect in terms of a rate of return that is your discount rate in order to justify giving you the money rather than them putting it in alternative investments which might have higher return. And that's the discount rate. We'll talk about this actual formula in more detail in the next video.